live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Accenture Interactive. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Jim Lalonde, CX Orchestration Practice Lead at Accenture. Customer Experience Engine, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for Thanks having for me. Thanks for joining us. Customer Experience Engine, mm -hmm. CXE. CXE, yes. That's your product, that's what we work on. What's the importance of that? What's the big deal? So the big deal is um, there's a proliferation of technology in the world and, and one of the, the main challenges is everything is siloed. Everybody has a different lens. When you talk to the sales uh, folks, they have a view of the customer. When you talk to marketing, they have a view. Nobody ever talks. And the problem is when these organizations, they, they think technology is the answer. So, and one of the things that we're always asked inside of Accenture Interactive is, well how do you bring all this stuff together? And we kept getting asked the same question over and over and over again. And so finally we decided, you know what? Let's do something about it. Let's make this so that you move the discussion away from technology and how can you accelerate your transformation and use something yeah. like CXE to bring that to life. Jim, you've been a pro in this business on digital, mm -hmm. going back looking at your, your history, you've seen many ways of the hype and the reality. You know, the titles of customer success manager, orchestration practice manager, you know, we're relevant, but now more than ever, those actually mean something. You look at orchestration, that's yeah. a big term used in cloud computing around orchestrating workloads, customer success, that's the theme of the show. Sure. Customer experiences. So now more than ever, we're starting to see some visibility into tech, implementations to hard problems that were being tackled by pioneers of the past, now in front and center here. How do you summarize that, that market right now? Because it, do you believe that to be true? And what is that visibility? What are people looking at right now? And then what's behind it? Well, for far too long, it was always about the technology providers themselves or the, the, the well, who are our customers, the, the organizations that hire Accenture to, to help them transform. But what we've seen is just a complete seismic shift. It's all about what does the customer or the consumer want. It's not about what we as organizations want, it's about what the consumers want. So we do very much see that as a trend that's moving and in, in order to do that, you really need to decouple your systems of engagement from your systems of record. And by doing that, it allows organizations to experiment. So there's new technology coming in every day. Probably while we're sitting here, at least 100 <laughs> others have, have come to life. Yeah. But it becomes hard because when you're always having that technology come into play, how can you plug it into your own ecosystem to let the consumer get done what they want to get done on their terms? Because that's their expectation. They don't really care what your internal problems are. They just want to be able to get done what they want to get done. And if they can't, with you, they'll go somewhere else. So the practice, what you're saying is the practice is have an environment that allows you to try stuff. Yes. Without a lot of hurdles and you know, integration. Yeah, so the, the, the standard thing would be anytime an organization wanted to try a new product, it could take anywhere from six, 12, 18 months just before they could even figure out does it work. What we're trying to do with CXE is turn that into a matter of weeks. In some cases, in a matter of days. So by having a platform or a capability set up, so as a new application comes in, great. I already know about the customer information because I'm making that transparent to everything. I can plug it in, I can experiment. I spend a month, I measure, does this actually work? If it doesn't, great, get it out. Let me try the next thing. So it gives that flexibility to organizations, which marketers love, because the last thing you want to do is tell a CMO is like, that idea you have, that's great. That's come, agility, that's come, agility. Exactly, come talk to me in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's different now in terms of the people, process, and tech, because we've been talking about 360 view of the customer sure. for donkey years, right? So yep. what's now is different? Is it just a, a perfect storm of some of these things finally coming together? Is there some particular process or, or kind of secret sauce to get us over this you know, finally we're here, you know, we can finally get that view of the customer. So, one of the things that, that started to happen was you started moving the, I, the idea and the concept of a single view of a customer out of back-end, master data management, legacy, hard, really complex uh, applications, and with the proliferation of what they call customer data platforms, CDPs, there are applications that are built natively in the cloud, that are exposed through APIs, it makes it easier mm -hmm. to stand up those capabilities. So it really starts becoming a question of, well, why wouldn't you do this? So in the past it would be, well, I got to go get capital expenditure money and I got to go through this whole business yeah. justification. Now it's, I can have something stood up 
literally in a it's matter of built. months, which is purpose built. And it gives you that capability to then plug and play. So that gives, especially for us as system integrators, it makes it exciting for us because we can say, you know what? I can stand up a single view of your customer. I can decouple that from the Salesforce, the Adobe's, the Marketo's ERPs of the world. ERPs and stuff that were ERPs never built and, for that, right? right they that, were never built for that. That's not their expertise. Take a minute to explain what is the customer experience engine, the CXC, sure. what is it? So, in essence, it's the plumbing, it's all the stuff that nobody ever wants to do <laughs> that always destroys transformations. So, again, this was one of these things where every single transformation you would ever see, I don't care, pick your vendor, Adobe, SAP, Microsoft, where they always fall down is in integration. It's just, it's just the nature of the business. So what we did with CXC was we said, you know what? What I want to be able to do is I want to have a microservices based architecture that allows me to, if I have a client telling app one week, I can plug that in. Three weeks later, I want to use something like Tulip. I'm going to unplug what I have. I'm going to plug Tulip in. But the experience that the consumer sees on the glass doesn't change. So when I'm writing a mobile application, I'm going to use the experience APIs. What sits underneath that, and this is yeah. what CXE provides, is that system API layer to then say, you know what, I'm going to unplug yeah. Tulip, I'm going to plug in something else. The consumer is yeah. none the wise. It's, it's, like, it's like a Tesla versus a car. There's all the software updates going on behind the scenes, changing the configuration of the automobile. Yeah. Similar experience, you're going to automate, create a mechanism so that the application, the workload for the user is not disrupted, but you're making modifications under the hood, so to speak. Well, think of it this way, so, and we'll go with the car analogy, <laughs> which was probably why we went with the engine, engine mechanism, but um, I was explaining it to another, uh, another gentleman, and he said, he's like, you guys are like the pimp my ride of <laughs> IT. He goes, you're, I'm not changing my engine. What I'm doing is I'm adding a spoiler here, I'm adding new tires and rims here, I'm you know, putting on you know, flames, I'm doing all these things, but the underlying engine or the heartbeat yeah. of the engagement, that stays the same. What you're enabling me to do as a business is tailor and adjust based on consumer expectations. So if today they really want to engage with us with email, next week it's through AR, VR, I, they have that ability and I don't have to completely retrofit my entire yeah. IT architecture. And, and this is the modern approach that we see people um, that are winning take a, take a certain formula and that is build software abstractions yes. in their areas of expertise. So here, if I get this right, the, the CXE, the customer experience engine, is essentially your domain knowledge at Accenture Interactive abstracted away to make it easier for the vendors to work through your system. Yeah, so, so you solve your own problem but yes. it ends up being a customer benefit. Right, because what, <laughs> We firmly believe the hard part in a digital transformation is not the tech, now, which yeah. is easy for me to say because I'm the propeller head in the room, but <laughs> to me it's, it's a much more fascinating conversation to say, how do we transform your people and your process to be customer centric? That's actually the hard part, it's not the tech. So by taking the tech difficulty yeah. off the table, yeah. then that allows them to jumpstart and get to the actual meat of changing how they operate. And the other piece of that, which I think is interesting, you didn't touch on it specifically, but I'm, I'm sure it's got to be there, is it democratizes the access Absolutely. and the ability to do things with that data to the people that aren't necessarily tied into the ERP and tied into these other systems. So you can now have other people running out algorithms, doing tests, doing Absolutely. experimentation, so really that democratization is so important. Well, it's amazing the empowerment that you give people when you just provide transparency of the data. So, when, a, when the sales staff, if the, if the retail rep in the store, all of a sudden has transparency of what have been the engagements that have been going on with the consumer, they can have a meaningful conversation and they're focused yeah. on how can they help that consumer in that moment. Um, so we look at it as, um, you know, the last moment that you engage with a consumer is usually the most telling. Because typically, you are 20% more likely to maintain loyalty if it's a positive. You're only 4% likely if it's negative. Yeah. And if anything, you will lose 32% of your population on one bad experience. Jim, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, vendor relationship and not so much lock-in, because I think lock-in is really about value. If you do a good job, you get value, the customer will use you. But with cloud, T tools and APIs are, are becoming a very key part of yeah. the, the tool chest, if you will, for the users and your customer base. And so we're seeing that the skills gap and the retraining that's trying to happen, 
tends to focus on APIs and tools. So Amazon's got a cloud, Azure's sure, got a cloud. Everybody's got a cloud. No one wants to learn 10 different tool sets, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you view that? Because I think um, we hear from practitioners all the time and they always say, you know, I just want it to work. I want infrastructure as code. I love DevOps, I love agility, but I don't want to learn all these new tool sets. So I'm, but I'm comfortable with this cloud. Or I'm comfortable with this, these kinds of tooling, tool chains or APIs. Um, how do you see that evolving? Is that going to be automated away? Uh, will there be innovation there? What's your thoughts there? So, uh, my general feeling is, I think you're going to continue to see more and more consolidation of adoptions in the REST-based API space, just because, one, it's easier on developers, and developers win. So, if you make a developer's life difficult, they're just going to move to something else. So, for the organizations that embrace that, they're going to continue to see that. You will, you will start to see more and more automation, but I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, the economy that we work in runs off of APIs. And it's really, the more you embrace it, the more you share information or are willing to share information, within reason, I mean, there's yeah. you know, legal and uh, all sorts of things that have to, have to be looked after, but you know, that's, what, that's what drives things. So we as Accenture, we look at application partners that embrace that methodology, embrace that belief system of let's make it easy to share data. Um, that's one of the things that you know, Adobe, Microsoft, and SAP are doing with the Open Data Initiative is also trying to make it easier to share information amongst different stacks. So it's a, it's a variation of that, and I, I do believe that you're going to continue to see more of that just because, yeah. Yeah. again, the consumer, that's what they expect. And also the cloud native trend also, that's a tailwind for that movement as well because they expect it too. Sure, Standard, but I mean, yeah. to a certain extent, if you think about it, what's even cloud native anymore? Because a lot of times people say, well, I'm on-prem, well, where are you on-prem? Well, well, I've got my virtual cloud sitting over here, or my private cloud. It's, it's just, just distributed computing. Right, it's just, right. It, it's, it, there's nothing fancy about it. So it's, yeah. All right, what's getting you excited here at, at Adobe Summit? I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with the platform play. I think they got that right. I think uh, they didn't overreach. Uh, it's laid out nice, single view of the customer. You got the data pipelining and semantic engine on the, on the other side of it, and a variety of app integrations. Looks solid to me. What's your thoughts on Adobe? I think it's a good first step. To, to, to be fair, I think it's a good first step. I, I actually applaud them for, for going down that path. Um, I'm excited about the possibilities it um, gives to our customers who are embracing the Adobe stack. Um, I'd like to see them go further, especially with, in terms of extending it out to other partners as well. Um, because it's one of those things of, there's no one platform that solves everything. That's a large reason why we, we established CXC is the days where you could just have all Adobe and that's going to solve everything across sales service, marketing, and commerce, that's, there's no one provider that has that. So you need to have that ability to transfer data and to drive that experience. So I'm excited about where Adobe's going with the experience platform because I think it's a good first step, especially on their side, to try and make it easier. Again, it's about how do you make it easier to deploy applications so that you can serve the purpose for the consumer. So I think, it, I think it's a good first step. How would you describe the makeup of the ecosystem community breaking down from developers to integrators and partners? Because as you start to see this kind of enabling platforms, as you said, it's the first step, it's foundational. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it kind of evolves. Sure. Ultimately, developers will, to me, will be a canary in a coal mine on this one, but how does, how, what's, how's the makeup of the community? On the development side, what, did, what is the personas of the developers? Are they hardcore cloud guys? Are they mostly app developers? Is there some segmentation? What's your view of this? I think, so what I'm seeing is uh, developers turning more into cross-utilization of skills. It, there's, there's less and less of, I'm just this type of developer. It's usually more of, I'm going to experiment and do a little bit of everything. What I've actually been finding interesting is a lot of developers are turning into people that sit in marketing or sit in sales operations yeah. or, you know, some people have termed it citizen integrators, but it's people who do not come from a technical background, but the tools that are being created today are enabling them to do more of the integration work on their own. And that's one of the benefits when you have open APIs, REST-based yeah. APIs, is you can put more of that power in the hands of less technical users. That's not to say you're not going to ever need hardcore developers, but what I'm seeing is more and more non-technical people yeah. are getting into the development Because of the time well. cycles are changing. They want to be oh, closer yeah, to absolutely. the customers, they're closer to the front lines, not in the back office kind of coding away, right? Well, you just, you don't, with, con with consumer expectations shifting on a dime, you can't wait. And that's one of the things that, that we spend a lot of time trying to help our IT side of the house uh, customers yeah. is 
how to be flexible, how to be nimble, so that when marketing or any business leader comes to you and says, hey, I want to try this yeah. out, you don't say, I'll get back to you in nine months. It should be, I'll get back to you next week. Yeah. And that's really the goal of what we're trying to do and with And we're CXC. seeing new titles. We had a, a guest on theCUBE. We've been doing theCUBE for 10 years. First time we've ever had a guest with a title, marketing CIO, which was kind of basically saying, look, I got to sure. sit, sit in the marketing team and be a CIO over here and translate and put projects together and make things happen, to your point about yep. citizen integrator, kind of like putting it all together. Well, I mean, it's no different than you see more and more CIOs become much more business focused, business savvy. They're not just, hey, I'm going to keep the lights on from a technology perspective. The, um, the more successful CIOs have that business lens. No different than the CMO. The CMOs are having to get smarter on technology, and a lot of times, what we're seeing is the CMOs are driving the tech agenda, not the CIOs. So as a result, I'm not surprised to see I'm the, what'd you say it was the chief? Marketing CIO. Marketing CIO. Marketing that, CIO. That's, that's, that's a, a good one. title. That's a new <laughs> one. Yeah. Jim, thanks for the insights. Great to have you on. Yeah, Love thank to get you. to talk tech and under the hood. Marketing tech's great. Uh, final question for you. What's next for CXE, customer experience engine? What's going on? What's the next leg of the journey for you? So the next leg of the journey is we've already got the integration layer uh, laid out, so we can pretty much plug and play any application that, that is out there. We're, di we're really diving into real-time analytics, real-time segmentation, taking some of the power of the capabilities that are in the CDP space to drive those engagements. So it's really, it's, it's an expansion in that data space and making it that much more accessible to our customers. That's great, you guys bring some abstraction, some automation to the table for customers. It's a cube bringing you all the data here and the insights. I'm Jeff Jeffrey, stay with us for more day two coverage after this short break.